more than he did yesterday. So that's, that's a good sign. Um, don't really know what that actually means, but we had a total of nine guys today, which was uh, good enough to do uh, a lot of three on three on three stuff. And do you feel uh, better about the fact that, you know, tomorrow's game is postponed and, and now you guys can work towards Sunday to potentially play? Well, yeah, you know, going into yesterday's or last night's practice, I was very concerned uh, knowing that we haven't practiced in nine days. Uh, the conditioning of our players is extremely, and the health of our players are extremely important. Uh, but I, I believe we got the, the, the best commissioner in sports and, and they take the players' uh, safety and health um, it's at a premium, and I knew I knew that when they look at all the, the things that we had to go through, that there is a good chance that that would be a postponed game. Uh, but now it gives us a, more opportunities just to get our guys back in in the uh, right frame of mind. One, and then the uh, NBA uh, game condition would be another thing. And we're still we're still going to be shorthanded, but at least now it gives us a. A, a fighting chance, which is that's what I want. That's what our guys want. And now we can really embrace this opportunity and and build on it and, and kind of rally around each other. And it wasn't, I mean, let's face it, it's not an easy decision what uh, the league has to do. I mean, they've had some tough decisions they have had to make over the last uh, couple of weeks and, and give them credit because it's easy could have said that, you know, I just play the game, just get another game. Um, on the books, but it's not about that. It's about this, uh, uh, about the players. And uh, that's why I'm so proud to be a part of it because I knew that they would do the right thing. Fred. Hey, Scott. Um, if, if you guys play on Sunday and have to play with nine guys, your, your roster is kind of disproportionate in terms of the skill sets and the positions and all that. I think actually what I just said might be the understatement of the year. Uh, what are you going to do about, I don't know, I, I guess everything, uh, your backup point guard, backup center, how are you going to try to fill in those minutes? It's uh, definitely going to be a challenge. It's funny. I heard um, talking to Robin uh, before practice, we had some good conversation and he brought something up and it really, it really made a lot of sense. And it was actually pretty funny and clever. Um, he said, coach, you remember your high school playing days? Um, first of all, that was like a long time ago. I, I can barely remember that, but he said, it's like, it's like October, uh, early in the early in your practice and you're waiting for the football team to finish up. So you get an extra three or four guys. And he said, that's how practice felt yesterday. Uh, because we didn't have enough guys to do anything. We're waiting for the football team to, you know, to lose their last game or win their last game and get back on the, on, on the court with their, with the team. But it's exactly how I felt um, yesterday. I felt a little better today, but I know we, we have some, I mean, there's obviously a, we have some holes, but there's also some opportunities um, and, and, and wrapping my, you know, wrapping my mind around it. Now I'm more excited about how we can, fill it in and, and kind of junk up the, uh, the game and give us a chance. And I think we got a pretty competitive guys. We're going to, we're going to fight like heck and, and we're going to claw and do whatever it takes to make it a competitive game and give ourselves a chance to win. And we've done that. We've done that with um, some of our injuries we've had and some of our guys that have been out uh, so far this year. And, and, and regarding Russell, you mentioned you did a lot more today. Is he, is he doing contact drills? And is there any possibility that he could be back if you guys play on Sunday? Um, when he's doing, we, we did some contact drills, not a lot of contact. I mean, because there's only, like I said, we had three on three. We did this like continuous drill, uh, work on some things. And we did some five on zero offense because we don't have enough for 10. Um, don't know if he's going to play um, Sunday. Um, I, I hope, to, I mean, I want to play. I hope that we can play and, you know, hopefully we can we're trending in the right direction that we're going to be able to play. And if, if he's ready Sunday, he'll play. But if he's not, we'll wait. Um, 
until Houston. If he's not ready, then we'll wait till the Pelican. We're in no rush. I mean, I like to have him back. He's one of the best players in the league, and he's he's feeling better. But we it, it takes it takes some time uh, to ramp up. It's a long season ahead of us. Chris Miller. Hey, Scotty, you talked about experimenting with some of your players. Um, Bradley actually played small forward in college. Like, is that – you're laughing under your mask, which I can tell you're laughing, but, like, is that some of the things that you and your staff are talking about with, I don't know, maybe asking guys, like, hey, what position did you play in college or in high school and maybe experiment with that? Well, it's funny you say that because there was times last, last night um, – Bradley was running the four spot in our offense because we needed bodies. Uh, today, there was, there was many moments where he was guarding Rolo. Uh, and, you know, Rolo has all these moves down low and footwork is impeccable. And Brad was trying to push him out of his spots. And uh, it was pretty comical. I was laughing underneath my mask as well. But uh, that's what we're going to have to do. And I think we're going to, we, we definitely, our mindset today is a lot better. It gives me, I'm, I'm excited about it now. I mean, last night, I mean, I was in a, I wasn't in the best place uh, and I don't, I don't get there often. Um, but today, seeing the guys come back and it was a really, we had a good practice today with, with, with what we had, but they understand that we're going to have to mix things up and you're going to have to play, but the other teams are going to get confused too. They're not going to know we're going to, it's going to be like, um, I don't know. We got one. We got one five right now. Robin and Robin and four wings. It's like an old '70s band. Um, but I think our guys are going to enjoy, you know, being out there and just playing and competing again. We miss it. I mean, we've been. It's going to be two weeks. You know, you don't ever think. Never in my wildest imagination thought we would have a two-week break in the middle of January. Um, but unfortunately, it is. Um, what's going on is real. Uh, but we're excited to be back to compete. And hopefully we can get in and play well Sunday in San Antonio. Was it just something as simple as a conversation with the PA and the league to get everyone kind of on the same page about timeline and player availability? Yeah, I mean, they know. I mean, they know exactly because, I mean, we're, we're under their, their guidance. I mean, they know that nobody can be in the gym. Um, and then – one player can be in the gym by himself. I mean, the last time a player did that was never. They'd never do that. It's old school workout. Uh, when you had only yourself and the ball and you had to get your own rebound. Now we have plenty of rebounders. So that was different for the players. I mean, I'm sure, I don't think they've ever done that before. Um, but yeah, it's always been the NBA. They know exactly what we were going through. And then yet, even yesterday, we were waiting and waiting and waiting. I didn't leave my place until after like 6 15 because i didn't know if we were even going to practice uh, uh last night so it's um they understand like i said we got the best commissioner in sports uh, we're always about the players and we're going to always do the right by the players and to me it was a once they got all the facts and see everything it was a pretty easy decision uh or not easy decision a, a tough decision but uh everything in front of them made it a lot easier Howard. Hi, Scott. Uh, the, um, w with all that's been going on for you guys, the, the slow start, the injuries, the ridiculous gap between games and practices, I would think maybe there could be a temptation to, to sort of write off the season. Um, how, how do you avoid that, avoid it with your staff and your players? Well, that, that's definitely... Um, I've seen that in the past with other teams, but with this group, I mean, just, I come in every day and I get to see them work and their, uh, their attention to detail, their, their seriousness about the game, about their profession. That, that doesn't even cross my mind with this group. We know, we know that we've had some, uh, some tough luck, uh, this season, uh, TV being out and then all the stuff with the, with COVID. Uh, and the contact tracing and all that. Those are stuff that we, we have to deal with. And, uh, but I'm still, I'm still excited about the group. We lost, you know, those first 
uh, five games, it could have gone, I mean, I'm not saying we could have won all five of them, but we could have won a, 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 a decent number of those games if a couple of things went our way. But you know what, we, the way I look at it, we're three and three the last six games. And, and this season is going to be unique. I don't know if the league is going to always do this with these playing games. So there's going to be opportunities and we're just going to have to keep building our team. And, and I know once we continue to get by this and get some games underneath our belt and get some, get some wins and we can be in that position at the end of the season where we'd be a, uh, we're a team that nobody really wants to play. And but there's a lot of games left and there's a lot, there's not a lot of separation from being in the playoffs and, or being in our position right now. And I just wanted to ask you about a phrase you used a couple minutes ago where you talked about, you said you weren't in the best place. I'm just wondering if you could expand a little bit on that, what, what you mean by it and, and what it was that, I mean, you indicated that you're in a better place now, sort of what changed there. Uh, I mean, going into last night's practice, I didn't know what to expect. And then just seeing, just seeing our guys, I mean, they, they gave great effort, but they were just, we were, we were all out of sync. Uh, like Robin said, it was like a high school team waiting for the football season to be over. And I was no different. I haven't been around our guys for nine days. Uh, Zoom calls and text messaging, that's, that's, that has played out. That's been going on since March and we're all tired of it. Uh, and in this season, we get to be on the court and that's been, uh, been you know exciting for all of us. And then last night, just we didn't nothing seemed right. And then not knowing, and then thinking about, okay, we're going to have to go to Milwaukee in a, in a in a couple of days, and play against a very talented team that is championship ready right now. Um, and I didn't, I didn't, I was worried, and I was quite frankly, I was worried about the health of our players. I wasn't worried about us not going in there and playing well. I was worried about going in there and and something not good happening to our players uh, health-wise. And that was my main concern. That's why I wasn't in a good place because I thought we would have to go because I didn't know if, if they were going to hear, you know, hear everything out. When, they, when I got the news last night, it gave me, you know, gave me hope. And I was hoping that they would make that decision. I wasn't going to try to force it or wasn't going to talk about it, but I was hoping that they would make it. And like I said, I'm proud to be a part of this league because it's always about doing the right thing, you know, on, on the court and off the court. And, and I'm in a good place now. I'm excited about the opportunity. I, I hope we do get to play. I know it's going to be a challenge. I know it's not going to be easy. We got, you know, three and four, four and six, um, with a, not a lot of bodies is going to be, it's going to be a juggling act with minutes and, and, you know, you hope that nobody, nobody gets in foul trouble, but it also gives guys an opportunity that even to play, maybe I didn't think that they can play this position. Now it forces us all to be creative, players and coaches alike. I got a couple more, Ava. Hey, Scott, um, when we spoke to you and Tommy, I think last Friday, whenever that was, um, you had a couple of players who had tested positive but weren't experiencing symptoms. Are those guys able to do any of the Zoom workouts you were talking about, or do they just kind of have to think they're not allowed to? No, they're not allowed to. Um, they're not allowed to do much. I mean, I'm sure, I mean, I'm, we're not telling them to do anything because that's not, that's part of it. But I'm sure, I mean, these guys are, I'm assuming they're doing something at home, push up to sit up. Uh, they're not just playing, you know, NBA 2K. I would, I would hope not that's not all they're doing, but. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. I, I haven't really, I haven't talked to them about what they're doing. I just, I'm more concerned that they're, that they're feeling better and they all are feeling better, uh, which is great. Um, you know, we get them back. Um, don't know when I wish I can, wish I can plan it and, and put a, uh, so I can plan my, uh, days and, and games alike, but it's, um, you never know when they're coming back and it's going to take some time. I mean, I'm sure they're going to be a little deconditioned and we're going to have to get them back to NBA, uh, be NBA ready. I mean, you can just look at some of the other, other guys that have been through it around the league. They've taken some time once they even back it from the NBA protocol. I think actually playing 2K does count as practice in a way. It's kind of like watching film. Right, I'm sure. Uh, 
All right, last question from Lewis. Hey, Coach. I'm wondering if you see a way with the amount of time left in the season uh, and how shorthanded the team is right now for the team to safely play 72 games. And then also whether you're surprised you didn't also get COVID. It's a great question. And I've thought about um, both of them quite often. Uh, my family has as well. Um, I don't know. I mean, I, what do we miss? Six games. I don't know how that's going to be planned. The NBA, I'm sure they're working on things as we speak. Um, but there's going to be that, that little break between the, the two parts of the season. I'm sure they're going to throw in, you know, three or four games in there. Uh, and then maybe make up a couple of, you know, whenever we, whenever we see an opening. I don't know. I haven't been told anything on that. Um, yeah, and then the, the being worried about or not getting, not myself getting COVID. Uh, I don't want it um, like none of us do. And I'm going to put myself and our staff and our players and we're going to continue to talk about it. Um, and the NBA is improving every day and are putting more things in place. And that's going to help um, the overall health. I mean, we all want to uh, stay safe and you know, I'm doing my part wearing a mask everywhere. And I think, you know, that's obviously um, beneficial. It helps. I mean, we're trying to uh, keep everybody, you know, everybody has families and, and we want to all be safe. And like I said last night, it's real. I mean, it's real. 4,200 people passed away yesterday. Everybody, every one of those, every one of those, um, um, the people there, they all, they're, they're important. Everybody has a story and a, and a journey and people are, they're loved. And it's uh, definitely um, something that I'm worried about. I'm concerned about, um, but we have to do it. I mean, our country has to do it together. We can't do it um, separately. That's, I mean, it's to me, you learn that, you learn that in your growing up in a large family and you learn that playing sports. And you learn that um, playing at the highest level in basketball, you got to do it together. You got to be united, and 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 we and we are, and we're going to continue to be that united front for you know our organization. Robin, on a light note from yesterday's practice, how would you rate Bradley Beal's post defense? <laughs> I think it was very effective. You know, um, he's an intimidator on both ends. And um, I don't, that's not something I want to have to witness again. Interpret that as you will. <laughs> uh, you've been in this league a long time, man. How do you kind of just describe, like, driving to the practice facility yesterday, just not knowing, first of all, what a practice would look like with the limited amount of players on the roster? Um, I was talking about co with Coach about this earlier, and it feels like everything we do, it's, it's kind of, it's definitely unprecedented. Um, you can't imagine it. A year, a year ago, um, I know he he mentioned that I equated it to a a high school practice before the football players are available for uh, for basketball season. Um, we we kind of came back after a little break. We don't have everybody, so people are playing out of position, um, trying to get get back in the groove, get that rhythm again. Chase. Um, Robin, uh, do you have experience doing that? Were you on the football team or were you on the basketball team and, and remember the football players coming back? I was on the basketball team. I recall the football players coming back. I've never played organized football in my life. So um, I don't know if that's, that's vital information for this conference, but <laughs> I want you to know that about me. Um, and, you know, obviously at some point the league hopes to, to make these up. I, I'm curious, you know, from a player's perspective, the idea – Obviously, they, they try to avoid a lot of back-to-backs, and you guys don't play three nights in a row like you used to. Can you just explain kind of uh, from a player's perspective, you know, trying to avoid those types of scenarios? I think what, what's first and foremost in everybody's mind is 
trying to make sure everybody everybody on the floor is healthy. That's what the protocols for. That's what uh, that's what I think that was that was foremost in everybody's mind in regards to the Milwaukee game. We didn't want to go into a situation where we could potentially lose another player and uh, be at a at another bit of a disadvantage. Fred. Uh, Robin, I say this not in jest at all, but is there anybody on the team who secretly has some big man skills that we don't know about that can help you guys defensively when you're not playing? I, I really think uh, the, the league is, is it's kind of funny. I, this is going to sound a little weird, but the league is in the proper time and place for this. I, you, you see it out there. It's essentially positionless basketball right now. I think players are intelligent. They know how to play two, three, sometimes four different positions on the floor. Ava? Hey, Robin. Um, when we talked to Tommy and Scott last week, they said that you were one of the players um, who kind of had a similar situation, scare or whatever, before you were really active in texting the players with test positive. What do you tell guys <laughs> in this situation to kind of keep their heads up and, and keep their minds in the right place? Yeah, I, I think... Uh, a lot of guys have been great just communicating with them in the in the group message, um, personal texts. Uh, we, we've got a, a really close team in that regard. And I think just keeping everybody in the loop, making making everybody feel like they're involved is, is, is important to us. What can you I get I don't know, I don't know how much you had to do before you got to DC or whatever, but can you kind of explain how weird it is in the middle of a basketball season to have to not be able to talk to your teammates, to talk with anybody? In normal life, obviously that's weird, but like for you guys who are team guys, what's that like? Yeah, it's it's a bit odd. It's a bit odd uh pausing pausing this our, our season for a little bit while everybody else plays. Um it's it, it kind of feels a little bit and I, I don't mean this <laughs> it's gonna sound a little funny. A lot of things I say sound a little funny. It feels like almost like an unscheduled all-star break or something like an extra all-star break, ex except everybody else is playing. Um, like, 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 like I said, we're just trying to keep everybody engaged right now. If they're in quarantine or um, if they're at home or if they're in the practice, practice facility, we're trying to keep everybody engaged. Thanks, Robin. Howard. Along those lines, how, how much of a challenge is that to keep everyone engaged? And is there the potential for, given everything going on, the injuries, the long gap between games, long gap between practices, to, to could there be a temptation to sort of write off the season? Uh, no, no, I, I don't think I don't think so at all. Not not with our group, not with the staff we have. Um, Guys I know on the team, uh, Mo, Rui, they're, they're, they're getting after it. I'm sure they're putting in whatever work they can right now, right, or, or, you know, right when they're at home. Lewis? Hey, Robin. I'm curious uh, whether you think it'll be possible for the Wizards to play 72 games this year with the amount of time that there is left and just – how many games you guys have missed at this point and uh what's your secret to not having gotten COVID yourself i'm always impressed that the league is able to manufacture an 82 game schedule with all the teams crisscrossing the country and filling out the parameters of okay teams in division have to play each other four times and out of conference they play each other twice so i'm impressed that they're able to figure that out so i have faith that they're all they're gonna everything's gonna fall into place uh in regards to the second half of the season. Um, you know, I think uh, as far as COVID, you know, everybody, it's a, it's a problem everybody, everybody in the country is dealing with. And I, I think, not to talk about, you know, recent, recent events, I think it's great we have, a, a, you know, an administration in the White House that's gonna actually uh, deal with a lot of that. I think there's a lot of personal responsibility as well. Fred, do you have another? Yeah, I, I, I was just curious, Robin, you mentioned a couple minutes ago that you, you this feels like a all-star break except every other team is playing as well. 
Do, does this feel like a real season at this point with all the postponements and not just you guys, but, but around the league, does, does this feel like a legitimate season to, to you guys? It does. It does. I think I, it feels like a real season to get everybody's invested. Um, if, if people did have something, something invested in the season, I don't think anybody would have any problems with missing games or, or flying out to Milwaukee and, and, and and just giving half the effort. No, um, people, this is definitely a, a genuine season for us. Everything feels genuine to us.